In memory of Elizabeth Reed, I'm brother spending life at ANR Studios. Uh, it's actually a great uh, um, it, it really is a great light. Um, before Ms. said, if you want to hear something that's a little different from you know, Fillmore East, the life of AR, which I think is a more recent release or something. I don't know whether it's just like was lost in their master tapes so or they forgot they had it or something. I don't know. Someone discovered it, you know, later on down the road, but it's fucking great. And, uh, I'm gonna try to put together a Stratocaster I'm working on. So I gotta work on getting myself mobile because I don't have to do it. I just I don't like living here. I just don't I don't like living in Vermont. There's an agenda here that I wasn't aware of that I don't want to be a part of. It seems like they say one thing and then they do the exact fucking opposite. <laughs> I ever want some enough enough. Enough people in the right places to make it where, yeah, I don't like living here. these ideas for these projects I realized oh fuck it's tedious I couldn't it would be really expensive to get two you know woven cords cloth woven cords so I got one really long one because it was on sale it was a really good price it was like 10 bucks for like 20 foot with a, a right angle on one end I was like you know what I'll cut it. I'm gonna make like I'm gonna do like a 12 footer and then like or I'll do like a seven foot, 13 foot or something, you know, whatever. I'll split it in half and I'll make one side a little larger than the other. In that way, because I don't, I, 20 feet is too fucking long, and it does, it does, it actually does affect your the sound of your rig uh, if you get if you want it with, with a, a single chain that long. It's like that long ass cable will dull your sound if it's too bright. So, but if it's not too bright, then you'll notice a difference, that's for sure. It's like I forget, it's like, oh shit, I forgot what happened to those little rubber conduit things they put on there. I was like, shit, what'd I do with those? Fuck. So I'm just going to use this heat shrink tubing. It's the same, but the other stuff's a little thicker. It's a little, it, it's, I'll admit, it's more ideal. But in a pinch, I think this will work.
power strips fucked up. So I don't know. See, it's playing them. It, it, it's like if you were to hear the Almond Brothers, probably a little pre, you know, pre fame, but you know, it's, I think this is before. Was this before Fillmore East or in between? Because they had they had two they had, they had multiple Fillmore East. Uh, there was the original Fillmore East one that they broke big, but I want to say they also have another tape performance. But I can't remember if they ever played uh, Fillmore East after Dwayne. I can't remember because I know they they played Fillmore East very final show. The last show ever played at Fillmore East Theater in New York was John Motors Band, and I think that's why it's like um, uh, a more contemporary but considered classic contemporary live album. The Warren Haynes era was like peaking at the Beacon or something. I think in the mid '90s. Something like that, early to mid, somewhere like 94, 95, six, like after they had a big album, like, you know, when that same time they played Woodstock, they were actually pretty, pretty big bad at Woodstock. Uh, they kind of had a resurgence there. I mean, like a major resurgence. Like they were still playing, you know, pretty, pretty big gigs even in the 80s, but they had kind of, you know, lost their luster as, as a touring act. But when Warren came back, they seem to build steam really quickly, and and be like, "Holy shit, man! They're yeah, they're like they're bad as fuck now." Or help help bring back the dimension that they lost on their in their live shows. How people don't realize it's like yeah, their biggest their biggest successes were post away. You know, Brothers and Sisters was their biggest selling album. And not only was that without Dwayne, it was also without their original bass player, Barry Oakley. He passed away too in a fucking, in another accident. I want to say both the lead singer, the, uh, the, or the slide guitar player and the bass player both died in motorcycle accidents. I want to say the one died like just like a little over a year after Dwayne did. So it, it was kind of like, you know, It's kind, of, it's kind of like, you know, uh, one of those things where it's like, that's why I said, like, Dickie Betts, you know, she get a lot more. And he's a guitar legend in his own right, you know, but, you know, uh, you got to understand, this guy was spar, that was their thing. Neither one was a rhythm player, neither one was technically, I mean, they were both lead players who would do a backing rhythm for the other one, you know, but it was like a duel, kind of like when you go to those piano bars, it's like piano duels, which are always fun. This is like a blues guitar duel. Every song is like them two dueling it out. And that's why it's like half the shit. Or, oh, it's Dwayne oh, and it's like, Well, actually, that part was Dickie Betts. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's a bad motherfucker, too. Yeah, he can go toe to toe with fucking Dwayne Allman on nightly basis and hold his own. You know. Um, but this was a great fucking performance. Um, I had been looking everywhere. For the screws for this, and I gave up hope. And I finally just had to cannibalize something else. So I'm going to take one out of one of the mini humbuckers because I think it's the same. I hope it is. I hope it's the same. So I screw there. Both a GFS pickup or GFS humbucker. And we're gonna do some fret work on it too. Because it, it definitely needs it. It needs some fret. Down at the very bottom, it keeps fretting out. And I decided to try it back on the old body that I had it on.
Okay, it works. This is crazy. So call me, maybe. Get in there. This would be like if they were doing like a bar gig. Playing in our studios. But I'm sure I'll probably broadcast live as a promotional thing for their album, you know, or for, you know, whatever. So A&R was in, was that Macon? 
And this is like their classic set. It's been the same set they would have played like at Fillmore. But you can kind of tell it's like they sound like practice amps. It sounds to me like they they just straight mic everything. They straight mic the drums and they brought small amps for everything else. They brought small practice amps, probably cranked up. Or, it, yeah, I mean, they, they would have played like, you know, 50 watt Marshall. Probably at least one to a full stack or a 50 watt to a half, to, you know, two separate half stacks or something like that. To play like a Fillmore East. And they probably, I mean, they would, they mic'd it for the recording, but, you know, you might differently a lot of times for, like, a straight live recording, you would just, to like, you know, mic it to the main PA. I don't think they played through the main PA. Just the uh, vocals. <clears throat> Maybe some of the drums. It's like when I used to go to uh, places in Athens, you can see, some, you can hear some great live music in places like Athens, Georgia, like at DT's Down Under, back with John Ontal, Crazy O. He owned that place. Oh, fuck yeah, man. Crazy O. I do love that motherfucker. I had music, I had music for less. A guitar shop right next to him. Me and him got to be buddies. He would hang out in the summertime, play video games with me in my store. <laughs> we sit right there at a fucking sales counter and just play video games. <laughs> I mean, it's, I do it when it works at the store in the summertime because there's no business. It's just like, yeah, it's one of those famine times of the year. You just kind of prepare for it. And that's what I did. I just got a video game console. Told Heath, yeah, he can take the summer off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We fired another guy. Well, actually, that was at one point we hadn't hired a new guy. The first summer I learned my lesson. But okay, next summer, uh uh. And he just happened to go out of. He, he, he went back to. Uh, I mean, he went back to his parents or something. I can't remember what was him. He had some kind of emergency thing with his family or something. And uh, he went back to South Carolina. He said, man, I'll be back, you know. I said, oh, no, come, come on back, man. <laughs> oh, me and him were tight. He, he, he worked for me at a guitar shop. He was a student at UGA. He felt right. <laughs> Great guy, man. I love him. <laughs> me, and him were, me and him were super tight, man. <laughs> we were. I was his boss. I, I was technically his boss. <laughs> you know. We go party and shit, you know. He he would he would be like, hey man, you need to be more responsible. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> no, he he do he do that. I had I, I you know I I had um a, yeah I had a good idea. I had a, see he said you know what if you, if you could have had better control of things, you would have been a hell of a success. If you could have just said fuck that shit instead of let your family get involved in things, go to a bank, get you know a couple hundred thousand dollars, get a half a million dollar loan, he said within five years, yeah, you'd be set for life. He was going to school to be a lawyer, I think. I don't know if he ever finished that. I don't know. I always learned a lot to eat though. He love him to death, man. <laughs> Never even make him breakfast. <laughs> Oh God! I mean, look, hey, okay. My buddy he uh, and my buddy Monty, he works for me at the guitar shop. We we always oh, have some, there's some great stories of us in, in Athens, man. Uh, where where is it? Was it Barcode? <clears throat> I think that later became General Beauregard's or something. Or fuck, was that Barcode? Was Barcode next to it? Shit. Remember the really hot waitress? Oh fuck, what was her name? A really hot bartender? Fuck! I want to say it was Barco, but I don't. I want to say maybe Barco was next door. Because it was. I mean, it was like three doors down from where I was. A couple doors down. It was one of those ones where when you go in, it's on ground level. But then farther towards the back, they have an upstairs in the back. A lot of places have that. Yeah, uh, but we used to go upstairs part usually. 
where pool tables were. There's an upstairs bar. It's kind of like, um, I was going to say that, that dance club, uh, that place has changed this, but I don't remember what it's called. But it's right there in that same little area where DT's was down at the bottom. And then above it was Helix. And then if you go over, I think, one more building, then it was like barcode. Or was barcode next to Helix? I can't fucking remember now. Shit, it's been so long. Because Roly Poly was next to me. And the Helix was on the other side. And then below the Helix was DT's. I don't know. We were, we were at barcode. We were at other place. That's over there next to Barco back in back in like the late nineties. I remember when he and the only one I'm talking about, Heath looked over at Monty and said, Let me make you back for and he was picking on this really ugly woman we knew. It's really sweetheart. Lord was she not attracted. It was funny she got a day job or whatever. Now she actually looks pretty good. <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. It was mean as shit. It was fucking hilarious. I've been worried about fuck. We all fell out, all of us. Stacy too. Don't even matter like you didn't. All right, let's see if this thing's alive or not. See if I can. Cause I need to do some work on frets too. On that. trying out the color combo thing is, is I really I really need a uh, plus this pit guard is like a, a leftover from some other project that doesn't fit I mean that doesn't work yeah that one works it may be the pickup's broken well, I know I took it apart at one point. I may have forgot to check it before I put it back in to make sure it worked. But if not, I've got, I've got, you know, I got this. I think I'm putting it. I need to clean it. The humbucker, the mini bucker. I'd rather it be a. A nickel or a chrome, but I don't have one. It all, it, 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 they're sealed. Like, you're not supposed to take them apart. Um, they're nice sound pickups. I've, I've, I'm using the bridge on that other strap. I'm thinking about just taking uh, this other one. It's supposed to be a neck. It's like seven and a half K, so it'll be fun. It'll sound like a vintage. It'll be. It'll actually sound good. Neck pickups in the bridge with a 250k pot on the strap, like you know what you would normally use for a neck pickup, like an Les Paul, like about a seven and a half k, you know whatever. Um, if you have the narrow spacing strap anyway, it'll sound fine. I mean, you don't have to necessarily match that up perfectly. I, I'm not that anal about that. Um, if anything, I've kind of realized the benefit of having a narrower spacing on the neck. And a lot of the, you know, uh, vintage pickups, true vintage pickups, from what I understand, will be, well, they didn't really use metric back then for that. From what I understand, they're supposed to be, they're supposed to be like either 48 or 50 millimeter. Or, uh, no, wait a minute. I think it's a Telecaster. It's a 48 millimeter spacing on the neck. But it's like a 54 or a 56 or something. Of course, it's also a more progressive angle than the Strat. The Strat's actually at, um, or is it the other way? No, it's the other way, I mean. The uh, Strat pickup, the Strat bridge pickup looks like it's angled the same way. 
slight it's 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 slightly less angle than a telecaster. So that's why it's like a lot of times if you have the American spacing, which means that you're like a 57 millimeter. I can't remember what the American. I've gotten so used to switching the thing over to using metric that I can't. Sometimes I forget what the fucking what the what the standard counterpart is. Um, but I want to say it's like 57 millimeters. So if. Uh, you have a 52 millimeter bridge and a 50 millimeter uh, neck, and it's like a 41 and a half or 42 millimeter spacing, you know. Uh, then, uh, well, I don't explain it. Shit. Work. Where is it going? I'm gonna work on this. I'm gonna see how I get it together. You should check out Almond Brothers A and R Studio. If you're an Almond Brothers fan, that fucking shit, it's great. It's great. 